So, uh, friends and in the press, uh, we really appreciate that the Secretary Pompeo uh, generously giving us the time uh, to uh, answer some of the interests uh, from the press. Uh, <clears throat> uh, first, I have to say that um, I have 40, men, uh, 40 questions. Uh, I do not think that I will be able to uh, 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 just read them all, so I try to lump some of them together. And then I believe that uh, the people here uh, will be interested in, in hearing what the uh, Secretary Pompeo would like to of say. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first, let me start with something light. Um, that is, people here are interested in how you lose weight, <laughs> <laughs> especially right yeah. after lunch. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I haven't lost any weight while on my visit here. You all, food has been so fantastic. I'm going to have to get back on my my serious health effort when I leave. Uh, look, it was pretty straightforward <laughs> just try to eat healthier and work out more, and it was no more fancy than that. Just it? <laughs> That's it. That's, uh, I wish I had a better answer. I wish I had a secret. No secret. Okay, okay. <laughs> so that's how you explain that, that you lose like 40, uh, 60 kilos? <laughs> Something uh, like that. Okay, yeah, that's impressive. And then the next, and also it's a light questions. Do you plan to run for the president? Mr. Secretary. Yes. Um, so I, I don't know what uh, will happen in 2023 or 2024. I've been working on this mission set, though, this mission for protecting democracy and freedom in my country. And uh, the last four years, I had the opportunity to try and help countries around the world be good friends with the United States and help build out freedom and democracy there as well. I don't know what 2024 will bring. I, I only know that I will continue to be in this fight it matters to all of us. It matters to uh, this great place uh, for the people of Taiwan. Uh, we, we need to defend uh, human dignity and sovereignty, and uh, the, we need to draw this line between tyranny and democracy so cleanly, so crisply, that we can preserve it for the next generation. I, I'm going to keep working at that, whether I end up going back into government service or not. Only the Lord knows at this point. So how about Time beyond year 2024. <laughs> What's that? Uh, you're talking about year 2024, but uh, how about beyond that? Uh, it's hard to know. <laughs> okay. We, have, okay. we have big elections coming up in just a few months in November in the United States. Uh, I, I hope that we'll elect uh, across the board people who, who care about uh, the relationship between the United States and Taiwan and freedom, protecting freedom in our nation as well. Thank you. I forgot that, that because we have interpreters here. So those two questions, would you like to translate? Chinese 会不会回到政府工作？那基本上都会持续这样子的使命。Thank you. And then the next question is about the Ukraine. That is the notion. Uh, today Ukraine, tomorrow will be Taiwan. Uh, is highlighted by some American think tankers. Um, the question is that: Do you agree with this belief or this uh, descriptions? And um, yeah, how how do how would you like to describe about the um, uh, Ukraine Taiwan's connections? So there are, uh, th there are certainly similar risks. Uh, authoritarian regimes with great power uh, who desire to use aggressive military force to bully around smaller nations. Uh, the, the world is replete with examples of this. We're seeing one take place in Ukraine today. It's, it's absolutely tragic. Um, I'm praying for the people of Ukraine, and we're all watching the people of Ukraine do amazing work to defend uh, their own country in ways that I think many did not expect. Uh, as for the connectivity between that and the risk that Xi Jinping might consider the same kind of thing with respect to Taiwan, um, Xi Jinping's intentions are deep uh, and his agenda is global and hegemonic. There, there's no doubt about that. Uh, but uh, Taiwan presents uh, a democracy that has great friends around the world and great friends in the region. 
And I am, I am convinced that there are a number of ways in which Xi Jinping is watching what's happening to Vladimir Putin, to the Russian military inside of Ukraine today that must be giving him great pause for having, for having met with Vladimir Putin just, uh, just several weeks ago and said that their relationship was unlimited. Uh, the Chinese people that are trapped inside of Ukraine regret that statement. The good people of Russia who know that their leader is destroying human life in ways that are random and evil and uh, depra depraved. I think there are many Russian people who can see that this isn't the right direction. It's not what they want for their country either. I think, I think every leader has to confront the fact that um, the world is watching what takes place in ways that in previous conflicts the world couldn't see. And each and every day you're watching the world unite in ways that I, I think are important and fundamental. I, I pray only this. We weren't able to deter Vladimir Putin from doing what he did in Ukraine, from crossing this line, from now launching uh, countless, uh, countless weapon systems that could be aimed only at destroying morale and civilian life and aren't, aren't truly military targets. Uh, that, is, that, is a, that is a failure to uphold a deterrence model that convinces folks like Putin uh, that they ought not engage in this activity. I am convinced that if we all do the right thing, uh, the United States, Taiwan, uh, every country in Southeast Asia, Pacific Island nations, Australia, Japan, South Korea, if we all work together to build out uh, a consistent understanding that uh, we're going to draw the line, we're going to be prepared to fight for the things that matter most of us, that we can continue to keep uh, military deterrence in place. And then finally, uh, much of what she does to the world isn't military. Much of what he does is diplomatic, it is information warfare, it is economic warfare. We, we've all seen this. America's seen them. Uh, Xi Jinping and the Chinese Communist Party steal billions of dollars worth of technology and destroy countless jobs across the United States of America. We have to confront uh, the Chinese Communist Party in every dimension of Xi's use of his power because he is using every element of his power, his nation state's power, to try and undermine the Western way of life. Thank you. And yes? I'm in the <coughs> 面对世界上许多的独裁政权我们其实都看到非常类似的风险就是独裁的强权正在欺负周边的国家我们同时也看到说其实乌克兰人民其实也都起身捍卫自己的国家其实习近平他本身也正在看在眼里正在观察俄
I, I made the simple declarative statement that we should just acknowledge the reality that the, uh, the Republic of China Taiwan deserves to have its sovereignty, its diplomatic sovereignty, its economic sovereignty, its political sovereignty, that the United States ought to recognize that as fundamentally consistent with who we are as a nation and where Taiwan places itself in the world. I think it's those kinds of things, that clarity, that recognition, that, that recognition of the simple truths, the things we all know, but sometimes, sometimes we're just a little worried that even saying so might provoke a bad guy. I think we've realized that the most provocative thing one can do is fail to demonstrate resolve. I think when the world sees alliances frayed or they, they hear disinformation from the CCP or from Russia that says that the West, those of us who value democracy and freedom, that our nations are in decline, I think when they hear those repeated and we, don't, we aren't resolved to demonstrate that those are fundamentally untrue, that uh, authoritarian regimes feel more free to undertake precisely the kind of adventurism that's killing Ukrainians today. We can't let that happen. Uh, it is too sacred a duty to do better than that. We have the capacity to do it. I'm confident that we all have the will to do it. It will take determined leadership to execute that. And I'm counting. I'm counting on the United States and Taiwan to both be part of leading that model, which will create, which will create a system, a, a system which prevents authoritarian regimes around the world from using force to try and destroy the people of a sovereign nation. And, 就像早上说过的一样，所谓清晰的明确态度，其实非常的重要。态度要明确，我们的准备要明确，才能够有效遏阻。那现在我们看到乌克兰的情势之下，其实许多的国家也都团结在一起。那当初要啊遏阻。俄罗斯这样子的工作基本上已经失败了，使得乌克兰目前深陷呃战火当中，这是我们的一大教训。那其实早上的演讲当中，国务卿也有提到，必须要认清楚中华民国台湾的主权事实，这是美国必须要认清的事实。就是因要认清这样的事实，才能够做到所谓的清晰又明确。有些人可能会疑惑说，这样子的一个说法跟做法是不是会挑衅到其他的强权？但是其实国务卿认为，真正会挑衅强权的，就是没缺乏决心的展现。一旦没有展现决心，才会让这些强权觉得有机可乘。只要我们觉得害怕，只要我们相信了许多强权的宣传，说西方跟民主的世界正在走下坡，像这样子的非事实的宣传的话。那其实我们都会受害。事实上，乌克兰已经受害了。我们要汲取这个教训。那此时，美国跟台湾应该要做的就是设立一个体系，透过这个体系，使得强权不会用武力去摧毁我们的生活方式。Yeah, the next question is also about the Ukraine-Taiwan. Uh, it's like this: the, uh, the Russia-Ukraine conflict has made Taiwanese nervous about the situation across the Taiwan Straits. Uh, what concrete steps can the United States, you think? Can take to de-escalate the situation. Yeah, you know, I've talked about this already. There are there are three pieces of this. Uh, the first is, I think, one of the lessons from what Vladimir Putin has done is that we we need to make sure that every freedom-loving nation is more dependent on other freedom freedom-loving nations and less dependent on authoritarian regimes. I, I mean that uh, economically, and I mean that diplomatically. We saw. Right, we saw what happens when, when European countries de are dependent on Russian gas. It is something that we tried in our four years to convince Europeans to walk away from, right? finishing a, a pipeline that made Germany even more reliant on Russian gas created enormous risk that in the moment there would have to be a pause because this was going to have an enormous impact on the German people. Uh, we need to make sure that our economic relationships are with friendly nations, rights-respecting nations, freedom-loving nations, and l much less connected to those that in the pinch, in the moment when they might want to act in a way that's counter to our desire to protect our way of life, our families, uh, that will have economic challenges. Um, second, we need to make sure that our military and diplomatic relationships are at the level uh, that they deserve. And I, I spoke to that some this morning, so I'll just leave it there for now. 那其实这一点基本上可以分分三个部分。首先，其两部分我们来讲哈，就是说，普丁的所作所为其实也给了我们一个教训，就是说，其实自由、爱好自由的国家之间必须要多增加彼此的依赖跟合作，而比较减少依赖对独独裁强权的依赖，尤其是在经济跟外交方面的依赖。像是说，最近我们也看到了，就是说，其实，在欧洲方面呢，我们也长期看到很多的国家，包括德国在内，都很依赖。
俄罗斯的天然气。其实，蓬皮奥国务卿在他任内呢，四年当中，其实也一直在劝导欧洲国家，尤其是德国，能够减少对天然气的依赖。不然的话，尤其像。呃，像德国这样子的国家就会受到很大的冲击。那在经济上面一定要去多多，呃，是多多去跟其他的自由爱好的国家、跟尊重权人权的国家彼此之间的互相的合作，才能够有效的去保护我们自己的生活方式跟我们各自的家庭。再来第二点是军事跟外交方面，因为早上的演讲其实讲的非常多，就不在此赘述。Yeah, Mr. Secretary. Uh, then next question regarding the uh, cross relation, also connected with the Russia-Ukraine conflicts, well, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The um, <clears throat> the thing is this: the uh, I think people in Taiwan they generally uh, they are so uh, they are so convinced about the United States uh, intelligence capabilities, especially how they uh, correctly predict the uh, Putin uh, will invade Russia. Uh, it will invade uh, the Ukraine. And the question is this, uh, what do you believe in the likelihood of China taking time by force? Uh, there were the reports or the, uh, in the Senate uh, hearing that the former indo pacom commander said that uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the war on Haiyan could happen within six years. Mm -hmm. So uh, on, on this backdrop, uh, how do you think about the likelihood about Chinese and war on Taiwan? Yeah. yeah you, one can't answer the question about the likelihood of this in a static way. It depends. It, it, it depends on how we respond and behave. It depends on the work that we do. It depends on uh, our willingness to listen to uh, Taiwanese leadership who tells us we need certain equipment, we need certain training assistance. You, you all are prepared uh, to expend your money to purchase these systems. We, are, we should be prepared to help you train and use them effectively as well. So you, you can't answer how likely it is in a static way because it, it turns on the willingness of the Western world to demonstrate that the costs for Xi Jinping engaging in that kind of activity are just too high. The, the last thing I want to say about this is, and I think this is really important, most of the conquests that Xi Jinping has achieved during his time hasn't been undertaken militarily. It's been done through his use of the Belt and Road Initiative. It's been done through his use of information operations around the world. It's been done through influence operations around the world. It's been done by using enormous economic power of the Chinese Communist Party to coerce small governments and say, boy, if, if you recognize Taiwan, we will stop sending tourists or visitors there. This is just as an example of how they've used their economic power. So when one thinks about cross straight relationships and the risk of Xi Jinping behaving in a way that is aggressive with respect to Taiwan, one shouldn't simply think of ships and planes and artillery, but one should think about Juan and diplomacy and information. Those are the spaces, cyberspace, information space, all of the places which, um, as sure as I'm sitting here today, Xi Jinping is thinking about trying to exert influence here, uh, here in Taiwan each and every day and trying his best to do it and we have to make sure that we are equally resolved in preventing this from taking place. Now, when we talk about the risk of the two sides, we can't talk about the same way. Because there are many things that are happening in any situation. We have to look at Taiwan and the Western countries in the 因应方面，在准备的工作方面，以及在决心的展现的方面，到底做的多好跟多少？所以，例如说，像呃，我们像像以美国来讲，他们就会比较希望说能够去多倾听台湾的高层怎么样去表达对于军事呃设备的需求，都对于。是呃，军事训练的援助的需求。那这个时候，如果台湾已经展现决心，愿意出一笔钱去来购买特定的一些装备的话，那那美国自然也会想要去提供相关的训练，去训练台湾的军事的单位进呃去做进一步的准备。那所以这个时候展要一定要去展现说，如果中国在台海这边如果掀起战端的话，其实对习近平来讲。代价是非常的高的。这边的一大重点就是说，我们也必须要认识到，除了战争这个议题的框架之外，因为这个框架是军事的，所以呢，我们要进一步了解到，其实习近平这从他上任到现在以来，他对于周边的一些征服的许多的情势，并不是军事方面的征服，而是运用他们的情报、他们的经济的力量、他们的网络论述的力量，想办法去影响非常多的小国跟周边的社会。像例如说，以经济来讲好了，中国共产党就特别擅长。
常去用经济的手段威逼这些小的周边的小国，说如果他们承认台湾的话，就会减少呃这些国家的，比如说中国赴这些小国的观光的人数等等。所以在这个时候呢，我们必须要去了解说，习近平他在。军事以外，在经济或者外交方面的其他的攻势，会带来哪些风险？这是一并要讨论的。呃、uh, ，Mr. Secretary， 呃、uh, ，There are still, I am going to、uh, pose several questions regarding China Russia.、Um, here, I think the、uh, the first question is that、um, uh, many people think that China benefits most from the current conflict in Ukraine, as both Russia and West are struggling. And、uh, there are several speculations、uh, about the origin of this Russia's invasion of Ukraine,、uh, whether China knows not only knows beforehand but also encouraged it、uh, in order to achieve the result or not. But there are also some、uh, speculations in the past regarding the differences. Between China and Russia, and also the、uh, China this time, for example,、uh, did not endorse、uh, publicly about the、uh, Russia's position on Ukraine. So those are the、uh, different pieces of the、um, fluid、uh, situation. And how would you like to comment on those?、Uh, I, I I don't know、uh, how much Xi Jinping knew about Vladimir Putin's intention.、Um, I know that we all knew since the fall. That he was stacking forces in、uh, parts of his country that looked to all the world like there was going to be an attack, and in fact, that's what resulted. Xi Jinping would have known that as well.、Um, Xi Jinping has now provided、uh, not only rhetorical support, right, the statement before the Olympics, which said that they'll have unlimited friendship.、Um, he has certainly lived up to that during this conflict. He has not done what he needed to do as a member of the UN Security Council. They should have made clear that aggression against a sovereign nation was unacceptable. They chose not to do that, and so I don't think we should give any quarter to Xi Jinping in terms of him having tried to play this both ways.、Uh, Xi Jinping has not done the things that、uh, nations must do when other nations are attacked and are victims of aggression.、Uh, I will say this too. Um, I think he's watching. I think Xi Jinping is watching this in the same way that he watches、uh, the people of Taiwan. You all are a, an enormous,、uh, a, enormous nuisance to him, just by the fact that you get up every day and you take care of your families and you go to work and you live in freedom and democracy. I think Xi can see this. I think he doesn't want his own people to see this. I think Putin's suffering the same thing. I think as the Russian people learn of the atrocities that are taking place in Russia today. As I, I think, as they see what、uh, Putin is doing to these women and children in Ukraine, I think this will redound much to Putin's detriment. You should know that I think she is watching. He's he 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 doesn't he doesn't want this nation to have its sovereignty because democracy flies in the face of everything that allows him to continue his authoritarian regime. If the 900 million, if the billion Chinese people who aren't part of the Chinese Communist Party. Were to have their way, I am convinced they would like to live more like people do here in Taiwan than the people do there on the mainland.、Um, we we tried for years、uh, the world, the world, the West,、uh, a theory that we began in the United States in 1970s that said if we engage more with the Chinese Communist Party,、um, we will make them richer and we will make them the people of China freer. We were half right. <laughs>、uh, that engagement made them incredibly wealthy, much richer. Than they were, it didn't make them one ounce freer. And the the work that we do, the work that our two nations do together, is sending a message to authoritarians like Putin and like Xi and like Chairman Kim and the Ayatollah. The list goes on.、Um, it's it's sending a message that the, those nations who believe in freedom and human dignity are prepared to defend that. In ways that I think, for an awfully long time, we all had taken for granted. I think we are now. There's a level of resolve today in the world, and I pray that it is not ephemeral, that it is permanent and prepared, and we will work in every dimension to make sure we defend the things that matter most to each and every one of us. Xi Jinping 到底知不知道普丁的意图？其实我们很难说。但是至少我们从去年秋季看起来，从俄军的部署方面，我们就看出一些迹象了。其实像迹象这件事情，习近平当然应该也是心里知道的。那习近平他其实也针对俄罗斯提供了口头上面、语言方面的支持，尤其是在奥运期间，呃，习近平也声音说过，中俄之间的合作是没有任何的限制的。
，而且再加上中国在作为联合国安理会的成员，其实就俄罗斯侵略乌克兰这件事情也投了弃权票，等于是没有进。呃，联合国安理会成员的一个义务，那个义务就是要保护其他的主权国家不被另一个国家所侵犯。那其实习近平看待台湾人也是这样的，就是当台湾人每天都过着自由自在的生活的时候，其实习近平对此也不乐见。那当然，其实俄罗斯他们也也我呃，习近平他其实也是看在看着普丁他的军队正在侵犯着。乌乌克兰男女男女老幼老老幼的这些生活，但是我们都知道一件事情，就是对独裁者独裁者来讲，民主的生活方式其实就是在阻挠着这些独裁者的所作所为。好，那接下来就是说，当当初在美国，在比如说跟中国共产党的政权在进进行交往的时候，其实当初呃美国方面的意图就是说，希望说透过让中国能够，如果随着中国变得更加的有钱的话，或许。中国也会更加的自由。其实当初的想法也只对了一半，那一半就是中国的确变得非常的有钱，但是一丁点的民主跟自由都没有。所以这个时候，无论是台湾跟美国，我们所做的事情，就是要向这些独裁者，不只是习近平、普丁，还有所有的其他的独裁者，向他们宣誓，就是所有支持自由、支持人民尊严的国家，基本上不但能够展现决心，而且这个决心是永久的。All right. The next question also related with the Russia-China and the connection with Taiwan. Due to the uh, the previous uh, questions, uh, which uh, sort of the uh, had the assumption about what Chinese acknowledgement about the Russia's invasions, then people started to wonder the uh, Russia's role in, uh, for example, should the war on Taiwan by China happen? Uh, so the what, how how do you uh, perceive uh, the Russia's possible role, especially on on the in the light of the, the current invasions, and uh, in the past, uh, did the United States ever thought about the uh, the Russia's possible involvement or role uh, in Chinese war against Taiwan? Oh sure, no we've we've long known that uh, Chinese military and the Russian military have have worked on problem sets together. So this this piece isn't new. Uh, there's lots of places that uh, the Russians are careful. Uh, they have known for a long time that because their economy is relatively small, that in that partnership between Russia and China, they'll be the junior partner in that. Uh, but Russia has a very highly capable engineering workforce. They have a very highly capable military. And so we've always known that there was some risk that the Russians would provide uh, weapon systems to China as well. Uh, but more importantly, what you can see, I think, happening today is uh, as the, the world is restricting Russia's capacity to trade, to trade in the ruble, to trade energy products, uh, to move through the financial systems, uh, its central bank, uh, the gateway, the thing that's, that pr provides the oxygen for the Russian economy is the yuan in China. Uh, it looks like they're going to build a big pipeline. It looks like they're going to build a big uh, energy pipeline, a real physical pipeline. It looks like they're also going to build a massive financial pipeline or it could well be that Xi Jinping provides the economic fuel that allows Vladimir Putin to continue this mission. Um, I hope that, that Xi, Xi Jinping will see that that is not the right path forward, uh, that he will, uh, he will himself fall afoul of these sanctions regimes. Um, we, we worked on this problem set an awful lot during our four years. I saw it firsthand uh, when sanctions are put in place by Western countries. Um, I think it will make it more difficult than Xi understands for him to actually conduct these transactions with the Russians. And I hope that the world will make very clear to Xi Jinping that if he runs afoul of one of these, that it could be Chinese banks that are next, it could be Chinese uh, financial institutions more broadly that are next, and this will convince China to deny that oxygen, deny that fuel for Vladimir Putin to have the resources to continue his campaign. That has deep ramifications for how Russia might participate were it the case that Xi Jinping ever decided to make an aggressive military action in Asia. 其实中国跟俄罗斯之间的军事合作也是行之有年哦，只是说俄罗斯在经济规模上相对比中国小，但是俄罗斯的，呃的的，它的利多呢，就是他们的工程的能力比较强，所以在中俄的军事合作之间，比较是中俄方会向中方提供相关的呃军事的系统啊或科技等等。那现在我们全球因应俄罗斯的侵略哦。主要是在限制俄罗斯对外贸易的能力，像是他们的金流跟货流等等，尤其是俄罗斯卢布的交易的这个能力。
，所以眼看全世界俄罗斯能够求援的对象似乎只剩下中国了。那的确，中国跟俄罗斯之间有呃比较大蛮大规模的天然气管哦。那习近平很有可能也会向俄罗斯提供经济援助。我们只是希望。习近平能够看得出来说，这样子做向俄罗斯提供援助，并不是正道，因为在国务卿他的任内四年，其实也都看得很清楚，基本上只要有西方的制裁这样子的力道下去之后呢，像被制裁方向是俄罗斯这样子的国家，其实对外的交易其实是更难的。那如果习近平还是执意要这样子进行交易的话，那很有可能下一个被制裁的对象就是中国的银行以及金融体系了。那接下来俄罗斯他的动作会怎么样？中国的动作怎么样？那也会看说这些制裁的力道跟相相相关的援助的力道会怎么样影响这些国家在亚太地区的动作。Yeah. So next. Okay. So I was alerted that I'm sorry that we really had to cut short of this press conference because I was alerted that the secretary also has other engagement, emergency just come in. So this is the last questions. Uh, well, I combine two of them together. Uh, the question is, how do you uh, view your purpose uh, come to Taiwan? That, uh, that's a simple one. Another one is about, uh, could you explain that the, the rationale uh, behind uh, in your last decision as a Secretary of State in lifting and all the restrictions about the U.S.-Taiwan official engagement? Uh, and uh, some people would like to ask that, the, uh, why that did not happen earlier? <laughs> So that's a, that's a fair question, why did it happen earlier? Look, the decision to uh, treat uh, Taiwanese diplomats coming to the United States the way we treat other diplomats was based on the fundamental idea that says this is in fact a sovereign nation and we ought to, the United States ought to treat Taiwanese diplomats no different than we treat diplomats from any other country. For years and years and years, we'd not done that. They're barnacle upon barnacle, new rule upon new rule all frankly uh, with an idea to somehow pacify or appease the Chinese Communist Party to not anger uh, the leadership in Beijing. Uh, that, that made no sense to me. Um, you know why it didn't happen quicker? Uh, bureaucracies are hard to move. Uh, uh, we wanted to be thoughtful about how we did it. We wanted to make sure we did it in a way that was complete and um, transparent and there was no intent to surprise anyone. It was simply a matter of getting America to the right place, to get to the right outcome. Uh, my, my trip here is perhaps a, a, a worthy place to conclude uh, this interview. Um, I had wanted to come here for an awfully long time. Uh, with COVID, it has proven more difficult than I, I wish. Um, but I wanted to come here because uh, the, the people of Taiwan are so deeply wonderful and loving of the central ideas that we have in the American founding as well. This idea that liberty matters, this idea that freedom of speech matters. I joked this morning, I was greeted by protesters when I arrived, it reminded me of home. Uh, these are what rambunctious democracies do. And I wanted to come here to say thank you to the people of Taiwan. Uh, they were such good friends and partners of the United States, not only during my time as Secretary of State, but in my previous role as the Intelligence Chief in America and while I was in Congress as well. I watched uh, our economies grow alongside of each other. I watched our trade relationships expand and I knew that mattered. It mattered to places like my home city of Wichita, Kansas, and it mattered to people all across the United States. And so I very much wanted to come here to be able to, to see firsthand this great place that I'd never had the chance to see, but to also thank the uh, the, the people here in Taiwan for all, for all that you do uh, to protect freedom for yourselves and for those of us around the world who care deeply to make sure that as many people as possible in the world get a chance to live in this way. Thank you. Yeah, please. Uh, so the the 那在这之前，所有的一层又一层的、越来一层又一层的奇怪的限制，其实都只是要安抚北京的当局。那其实这样子做并不合理。那可是我们知道说，我们并不能说，呃，一念之间转了，啊、呃，很多的规定就直接呃当场
消散、云散消呃呃消散殆殆尽哦。因为我们知道说，你要改变一个政策，很多时候你必须要通过非常多繁文缛节，还有很多的关卡，而且再加上我们其实在，在呃美国国内呃美国内部的政治，其实很多的事情都要面面俱到，也要透明公开。那至于为什么想来台湾，其实国务卿想来台湾已经想很久了，疫情又使得旅行更加的困难。那想要来，主要是因为台湾人其实他们我们所热爱的价值，像是什么热爱自由、热爱呃言论自由，甚至像我们还有很多都跟自己意见不合的情况之下，还可以去抗议什么的。其实这一切也都是美国真爱的价值。那其实国务卿这一次来意也是要特别感谢台湾的人民哦，因为台湾的人民，无论是在呃庞佩奥担任国务卿的任内，甚至在这之前，呃庞佩奥先生担任呃国会议员还有中情局的干部的时候，基本上台湾都一直是美国非常好的伙伴。那其实，在从政这么久以来，呃，国务卿他一一直也呃亲眼见证的台美之间的贸易关系一直升温，友谊一直的加深，这也是庞佩奥特别想要来台湾感谢大家的地方。Okay, I think that concludes our the press conference, and thank you very much. Uh, yeah, first thank you, and、uh, I really apologize for not being able to、uh, extend the time, but、uh, thank you. You go this way. <laughs> so I really, I, mean, I have to apologize for this shortened, already shortened, but shortened again. I, I secretary has other engagement,、uh, just emergently、uh, just inserted in. So uh, uh, sorry for that, but、uh, thank you for your gracious. And、uh, you know that I have so many questions, even just read it through.、Uh, can I really get then all of them? But thank you. Yeah, 我们这边就结束了，谢谢。